Uh, hey everybody, just going to show off my new toys here for my N-Scale trains. Um, I decided to go and get an NC power cab at the train show. And I also picked up the USB interface for it, which is pretty slick. I just figured out how to work with it today. And this is all for digital command control, which means you can operate more than one engine on the same track at once. Normally with regular you would operate each engine that's powered by the track and that's pretty cool by itself but this is even cooler. Now with the computer interface here see I've got it all set up through JMRI. Now they have the Panel Pro which is what I have open right now and they also have the Decoder Pro, which the icon's on here, and that can program each one of your functions, your your speed tables, your motor settings, everything else, which I've already kind of fooled with that, but I figured I'd give a quick demonstration of how your throttles work with this. Now, I've got two different Cato units here. First of all, I've got a EMD SD70 ACE and then I got an EMD SD40. Now these both are different engines and have different decoders and these both have di Digitrax but they're both different model decoders. So, so right now I'll start up the first one which is the SD70. So I'll hit this and I can turn up the throttle a little bit. See so I start up the throttle and now it's moving. Now you notice it's moving and the other one isn't. Well, that's the whole point of having DCC, basically. It's more realistic operation. Now the other one, I was talking about the light feature. Normally with regular trains, you can't turn on and off the light without turning off all the power supply to the track. Well, now with DCC, you can control that. So now I'm going to Turn this engine on a little bit and get her running. Now she's running a little bit. I'll speed up the other one quickly. See, now that sped her up pretty good. Now, the big point of DCC is that with also independently controlling each engine, you can also control each engine's direction too on the same track without anything else interfering with the other engine. And that's the big point of it. So I could stop this one. So she stopped. Now I'll hit the reverse, turn it on and start it up. It's moving backwards while well, this one is still moving forwards. Now obviously I have a little setup so I have to kind of stop that. So basically for right now that's what it is. I do have the Android app that I can use as a throttle also. The Android app is basically the same as the iPhone and iPod app just for Androids not for Apple products. And it works pretty well. I've fooled with it once already. It's pretty cool. You have to make sure your Wi-Fi runs pretty well, otherwise you might have a little bit of lag. But for me, that's not really an issue. Um, otherwise, it's pretty cool. I'd, unfortunately, this is all I pretty much have for space right now to run anything. I could probably run this a little longer, but... For right now, that's pretty much what I've got allotted to me budget-wise and space-wise. So um, down the line, I've got this engine with the decoder in it from my old Atlas system, but I think it's already gone kaput, so I'm probably going to have to either replace that, and then I'm considering putting one of the MR MRC decoders in it, which would be pretty slick. Um, otherwise... I've also looked at getting a decoder for this engine, which is one of the Intermountain Tunnel Motors. 
which runs really nice just on standard power, so I'm sure it'll be amazing on digital, which I think all these other engines are. And I've got the other engines, the Northwestern Heritage Unit and the Dynamic Duo, which I'll probably put over to DCC in the next couple months. Um, otherwise, you know, I probably got a couple Atlas units that probably need some some decoders and otherwise other than that you know that's pretty much all it is so uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day